Let's go. The draft is over. Holy shit, we made it, boys and lady. God damn, I'm excited. I literally shit my pants in excitement after all the draft picks we got. And all the undrafted free agents we're starting to get. They're starting to sign. They're coming in. Welcome to Baltimore, people. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'm going to be breaking down, or at least reacting to this draft as a whole, and then maybe some of the undrafted free agents that have already signed with us. And God damn, if you're like me, you're excited. If you have an unhealthy relationship with Baltimore Ravens football, you're like me. Too much of your happiness and your depression depends on one little sporting event. But God damn it, that's the way I like it. I love me some football. That's why I'm craving some Raven. I'm scratching my neck, trying to get me my fix. I'm jonesing. I'm jonesing for some draft picks. And finally, it's done. It's over. And now I don't know what to do with myself. I just don't know. But let's just get into it. Holy shit. So in the first round, we grab Marquise Brown. In the third round with our first pick, we grab Jalen Ferguson. And our, another, our other third round pick, we grab my, uh, wide receiver Miles Boykin. Then in the fourth round, we grab running back Justice Hill. Then in the fourth round again, oh yeah, we have three fourth round picks. Then we grab uh, Ben Powers, guard. And then our final fourth round pick, we grab... Iman Marshall, if that's how you say his name. Iman. Iman Marshall. Uh, then in the fifth round, uh, Dalen Mack, the Mack attack. And don't talk back. And then finally in the sixth round, our last pick, we picked up Trace McSorley. I have McSorley missed you. Oh, the days. I miss you so. So, with our first round pick with Marquise Brown, it's about time the Ravens got a flashy player. They did it last year with Lamar. You didn't think they'd ever do it again, especially under Ozzy, but now it's EDC time. And like Lamar's Instagram handle, it's a new era. Or should I say, it's a new Eric. Uh, DeCosta. We'll work on it. So they went and grabbed the fastest, most flashy, big play, small, little man, Marquise Brown. You know, there are other players like him in this draft, but no one that is him. We brought in Hollywood. Hollywood. And goddamn, at the beginning of this process, I wasn't, he was like my second or third favorite wide receiver. I can't remember when I put him in my list. I can't remember if he was two or three. A man's got speed. He can scare. He's going to scare any defense, keep defensive coordinators up at night because he has the ability to score on any play. If you're a Sooners fan, you might as well just become a Baltimore Ravens fan because now we are the Baltimore Sooners at this point. We have so many Oklahoma Sooners on our team now. They have completely replaced Alabama. I mean, I get it. They went to a national championship game. Get grab. All right, so grab players from the from one of the best teams. It makes sense. I'm all about it, especially if you get from their offense because their offense is very successful. And you bring in this guy, you know, the speed, the lightning to Lamar's lightning. Bring him in. Yeah. Throw him the ball every once in a while. You know, we're big play after some play action. RPO action. Oh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it happen. He's he's going to get a bunch of like 50-yard touchdowns. I'm already excited. Like I like I was a little subdued at the start, but you know what? I the more and more I watch the tape, the more and more I hear his name, the more and more I think about him and Lamar as a combination. Like I said, I sh I'm shitting myself with excitement. God damn, I just sharted with excitement. My butthole is connected to my excitement levels. Sounds weird. And, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to stop saying, saying it. Oh, my God, and I shit myself again in the third round. <laughs> With the 85th pick overall, Jalen Ferguson. Now, I was a little bit hard on this pick in my day two reaction. But I freaking love it. Because I was thinking my... Oh, I was so young, so naive. What was I doing? 
but now I'm a day older, and now I'm hyped. You know, because I was thinking, we need a guy who's better against the run. We need someone to replace Terrell Suggs, someone who can get to the, can get to the quarterback, but can also set the edge for us. But uh, Terrell Suggs didn't start off like that, and I, sack production is way more important. In this passing league, we, we have the interior defensive linemen to hold up in the run game, and our linebackers are fast enough. So just go after the quarterback, man. And if you want to replace Terrell Suggs, why not get the guy who broke his NCAA record, his sack record of 44, uh, 44 sacks by the man who beat it by one and a half, or at least one. I think it was like 45 and a half. I think that's what it was. Now, I understand he did it against smaller competition. Ooh, smaller competition. So you'd think you'd bring that yearly sack total down a little bit. But he goes to a great Ravens defense and to a coordinator in Don Wake Martindale who knows how to scheme up sack production. So I bring it back up. So I'm thinking 10 to 12 a year. Just saying. Just saying. I don't, I don't think it's unrealistic to believe that he could do that. Now, in the third round at the 93rd pick, we grab wide receiver Miles Boykin from Notre Dame. I'm not going to lie. I, I had been talking this guy up. I had said previously that he is a perfect fit for the Ravens because he is going to be on the field. When we're running it, when we're passing it, he is the dude. You watch him on tape, not just his highlights, watch his tape. Well, if you watch his tape, you're going to see a guy or you're going to see an offense that sucks and they should have gotten the ball more or at least passed better. So who knows if it's going to work well with Lamar, but he was open all the time. He knows how to get open late. He's got the speed to do it. But what I'm excited for is his blocking ability. Now, I know he's a receiver. Why do you want him to block? I don't. But when watching his tape, first thing you'll notice is when he's not involved in the play, you see him being useful and actually blocking somebody and not like one of those ticky tack eh, eh, one of those blocks. Like I'm talking, you ain't getting off him. I'm a big boy blocks. Looks like the dude, looks like a, a good professional in the game. Seems like he could be one of these guys. It's like, how did he, how did he go in the third round? Yeah, I could see him. Uh, honestly, I could see Miles Borg Boykin end up having more success than Marquise Brown just because of the sheer fact that he won't he doesn't have to come off the field and coaches will want him on the field because you take something to the outside you're gonna have one less man to deal with because my boy Miles Boykin's gonna be your boy can then be there um yeah love that pick loved it I know they moved up to get him got rid of some draft picks but it's hey man hey you like your guy you bring him in I would have liked to have the two extra six-round picks, but, I mean, our roster is already filled out. I mean, we drafted all Hall of Famers at this point. So so it's like, what, what are you going to do with all the rest of your players on the roster? That's the thing I hate. You fall in love with these players. You like seeing them play for your team on the field, and then they just go and cut them. Cut them right in the face. And get off the team. They do that shit, especially the undrafted free agents. You see them having success in the preseason, and then they go ahead and cut them like no one cares. That's fucking evil. But that's the way life is. Die and move on. And then, so in the fourth round, at pick 113 overall, we grab running back Justin Hill out of OSU, Oklahoma State University. In the words of Chris Collinsworth, now here's a guy who's a great running back, different from what we have. He is the lightning to Lamar's lightning. I know I already said that about Marquise Brown, but it makes more sense here because it's the running game. We already got the thunder and thunder in Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards. So now we need a running back with some... That's, that's the sound of him juking me. And I was, oh, my ankles. That's sound, I broke my cankles. He's so fast. Now he's fast. Uh, I don't know how good he is catching out of the backfield. Didn't seem to do much of it when I watched the tape on him. But, man, he is shifty and smaller, and I think will work well with this offensive line and this offense in general. He is a different type of running back that we have currently on the roster. And it's if you're going to grab a running back, you grab the guy you don't have. And I think he could have great success in this offense. Hall of Famer. Maybe. He'll be on the team for four years, have some success. 
because really, do do running backs get second contracts? I mean, and then if they do, I mean, who who are they? Am I Adrian Peterson? Eh, that's about it. Anyways, then with our next pick at one, two, three, in the fourth round, pick one. One, two, three. We grabbed a guard, Ben Powers, out of Oklahoma. Holy shit, another Oklahoma, man. I'll see you soon, nerds. Mr. Ben Powers. And I I put him in multiple mocks. I talked about him. I highlighted him many a times. Same with, I talked about Justice Hill a bunch, how he'd be good for the Ravens. I talked about Miles Boykin, how he'd be good for the Ravens. And I just talked about Marquise Brown and Jalen Ferguson and what they would be on the Ravens. But my, my tune has changed. They're my two favorite players now. But Ben Powers, he is a great, great guard. He is Bradley Bozeman, but better. He, they look like the same exact person. I'm pretty sure it's just him and a mustache. Even though he's not doesn't have a mustache, it's the same guy. But he is a little bit better. And if you want to talk guy who's great at pulling, Oklahoma pulled Ben Powers damn near every play. And... Judging off what they did last year, when Greg Roman kind of started to see his running game take over with Lamar, they they pulled everybody on damn near every play. And Ben Powers did that in college, had success. Now he's going to do it in the NFL and have some success. And if you want to talk about someone who finishes his blocks, dude's a finisher. He'll punch you in the mouth a little late. Kind of like a Ryan Jensen type, just not as feisty and without long hair. Then our final fourth round pick, we grabbed cornerback Iman Marshall. I didn't, I didn't really know about this guy. I didn't look at any tape on him. I didn't really do much work on the cornerbacks, like in general, besides like a few guys I heard as like sleepers, because I didn't think if we were going to get one, it would be in like the fourth, fifth, sixth round. A guy who they seem see as a great player, the best player on their board. And that's what they said. They said when they picked him, he was the best player on their board. And I did watch a. Uh, just his highlight tape after they picked him. And, I mean, I know you can't really judge off their highlight tape. But what they kind of said about him makes a lot of sense. Big, physical guy, knows how to <clears throat> knows how to make a play on the ball, great in coverage. Um, downsides, who gives a fuck? He's on the Ravens. But the, the highlights I watched, the thing that kept showing up, the plays he made, he, he's actually one of these cornerbacks that turns his head. I it's such a pet peeve of mine when I see a ball hit a corner in the back of the head in his back you know in in the interception like vicinity like where it's in his vicinity for him to catch it it's a turn your damn head man do it come on so we get Hollywood Brown and a guy from California in Iman Marshall Love this pick. Love seeing him play. You know, another big physical corner. We don't know what's going to happen with Jimmy Smith and Brandon Carr in the future. So might as well start bringing in the backups like we did last year. You know, bringing in some undrafted free agents. Just bringing in guys to compete. You know, we still have Stanley Jean Baptiste. So we're, we have a very, a very crowded cornerback room. And that only brings out the best in everybody. And I like what they're doing. You can't have too many corners. I know some people are a little butthurt in the fact that we picked up a corner, but I just said you can't have too many corners. And there's a reason the Ravens and Eric Costa and and uh, John Harbaugh, they keep saying that too because it's true. You can never have too much. The worst thing that can happen is you lose your best corner and there's no one there to fill the spot. You You end up putting a bum out there. Now, this guy, he's no bum. And like our other backup cornerbacks they're no bums and who knows what this means for Maurice Kennedy you know he's great when he's not injured but when's that it's just like Kenneth Dixon so they get these two guys like Justin Hill and Iman Marshall kind of replace our injured players who are perennial perennially perennially that, that's how you say it I'm pretty sure perennially injured get them off the team I know I do like Kenneth Dixon I like his running style I like the way he Hops around the field um, like a bunny rabbit. Has his hand up in the air like, hey, hey. You know, when like a girl's dancing, getting down. Hey, got the hand out. That's what he does. And he jukes. He's just hopping around, just boing, 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 boing. I'm Kenneth Dixon. I'm a wabbit. <laughs> um, so in the fifth round, we grabbed Dalen Mack. I didn't do much work on him because I didn't do any work on the 
the nose guard type because I didn't think we were going to draft one. Didn't really think we needed one, but might as well make a position of strength for us even better. We already have Brandon Williams and Michael Pierce, both of which take need two people to block. And here's another guy who need who needs two people to block him. So imagine having all three of these guys out there. That's six linemen that you need right there. That's not really how it works, but that'd be cool. Just seeing. I don't think. I don't think any team is going to have success against us on the goal line. Imagine like Brandon Williams, Michael Pierce, Dalen Mack, um, someone else we got. Throw in Ferguson. He's a big boy. And Willie Henry, if he's healthy, which who knows. I don't know what's going on with Patrick Ricard. Those racist tweets really uh, fucked him over. He's probably not going to be on the team. I really like this pick, you know, make a strength the strength. Keep the big boys up front. I don't want to see a team run on us. And if you're talking, you can always have two guys on the field, you know, rotate them in and out so they don't get tired because they are big boys now. He's like 340-odd pounds. Big boy, got some heavy legs, got a big old belly. I heard uh, Daniel Jeremiah breaking down the pick when we uh, drafted him, and he said a story that his teammates were saying when he goes to Whataburger, he puts down uh, three double uh fuck what are they called there's one here anyways they're fucking huge cheeseburgers if you're talking fast food whataburger has some big ass burgers and he puts three of them down like it's nothing awesome respect your game so oh also i remember he was one of the senior bowl standouts you know he went to the senior bowl and then started wrecking everybody and you know how the ravens they used to like their senior bowl guys but Here's one of those examples. You know, it's uh, it's not what they seem like they did last year. I don't really think they brought in any senior bowl standouts last year, but they did this year with this guy, and uh, I'm about it. And then finally, with the sixth round pick, the Ravens drafted Trace McSorley, and I'm happy about this pick because I I liked it. I I kind of called this out, or at least I don't know if I really talked too much about it on the podcast, but. You know, anytime I would listen to like a Ravens YouTuber, they were doing something live, I would always put out the question. One of my go-to questions was, what do you think about Trace McSorley at the end of the draft? And I was like, man, who cares? Because the reasoning was the way I thought it, as he is the best of the dual threat quarterbacks that's coming out. And he might not have been drafted, but the Ravens did not want to risk it. And that now they have three quarterbacks on the team. They can do those double those double quarterback formations, gimmicky stuff, if they want to, they have the option. And I really like Trace McSorley's game. I think he's a better passer than Lamar, but not even close to his running ability. Lamar is special. Lamar is elite. And this guy is just good. I think it's a white thing because he's white. <laughs> um, I've already seen we've signed some undrafted free agents. Um, I'm looking at SB Nation right now. I'm just going to list off some names. That, uh, that we've already signed. So as of right now, it is 7.37, like the plane, mountain time on Saturday. So on the East Coast, it is 9.37, not as cool as 7.37. So as of right now, the undrafted free agents rumors slash signings is we brought in Gerald Willis, uh, defensive tackle Miami, Jalen Smith, wide receiver Louisville, Michael Onuaha, Outside linebacker, Texas A&M Commerce. Is that like the business school? Uh, Evan Worthington, DB, Colorado. Is he a cornerback? Is he a DB? I don't know. Uh, Justin. I guess Justin. <laughs> uh, Justin Christian, wide receiver, M- Marist. Marist. Um, Marcus Applefield, offensive lineman, Virginia. Oh, he's... I don't know how to say this name. Ijo Daman, Ijia, great name. What what island are you from? North Texas. Otaro Alaka, <laughs> I like it like that. Linebacker, Texas A and M. Ooh, might watch some tape on him. I haven't seen that yet. CJ Too Good, man, we are just getting the best names. CJ Too Good, Otaro Alaka, Ijo Daman. Ejia, Marcus Applefield. Man, these are some great fucking names. Charles Scarf, tight end Delaware. Oh, 
CJ Two Goods offensive lineman from Elon. So Charles Scarf, whew, it's cold in here. Tight end Delaware, uh, Silas Stewart, linebacker, Incarnate Word. That's a school, and they have a football team. Is that like Incarcerate Word, Ward? Incarnate Ward, Word. Sorry. Yeah, Incarnate Word. <laughs> Dumb school name. Hopefully he's good. Actually, no, no, no. I did watch his highlights. He's a very instinct, instinctive linebacker. I'll go. I'll uh. I'll talk about the guys that I actually watched tape for in a second. Just want to list them off. Uh, Sean Modster, another great fucking name. Wide receiver, Boise State. Eh, Boise State. Where school to grab prospects from? Unless you're the Cowboys. Cole Murdman, another great name, dude. Tight end, Purdue. And Antone Wesley, wide receiver, Texas Tech. So, I have seen tape, and I didn't even need to watch tape, because Gerald Willis, he should have been drafted. Defensive tackle in Miami, he's a fucking beast. The dough boy down south. I don't know if that's his name, but that should be his name, because he is definitely going to make this team. Because he should have been he should have been picked around the same spot where Dalen Mack was picked. And he is a beast up front. He reminds me of Hakeem Hicks. Hakeem Hicks? I don't know. The guy on the Bears. The big, tall, little pudgy dude. He reminds me of him. Great, really great at uh, interior pass rush and also g- excellent against the run. Lives in the backfield. And here's, here's a good one. Jalen Smith, wide receiver Louisville. A lot of us Ravens fans, including myself, thought the Ravens might even draft this guy, but they didn't have to. And, and obviously when he came in, when he was you know, brought to the decision or had to make a decision on where he wanted to go in the league when someone said, hey, you want to come here? Come on in, man. He's like, no, no, no. I'm hanging with my boy Lamar. That's what I'd like to see. Let's see if he, if he can sneak out a spot on this roster. Our wide receiver room is pretty, pretty cluttery right now. Like a shipment box of... I won't go there. Never mind. Um, I also watched tape on Silas Stewart yeah he seemed like a very good instinctive linebacker great he didn't on tape he didn't look fast but he looked like he had the ability to make interceptions and you know he just made a lot of plays on the ball just super instinctive pretty tall you know a little bit thinner for uh inside linebacker type but he was all over the field he they had him playing corner like nickel like nickel corner linebacker outside linebacker on the edge you know, i saw him even line up inside excellent stuff there and then anton wesley i watched him wide receiver texas tech he looked like a big play threat you know big tall lanky dude kind of like a uh like a not so much a darren waller type but the big tall lanky wide receiver who actually had some excellent, like once he would catch the ball, had some elusiveness to him. I really like that. So let's see if any of these guys can make the team. I'm just going to check Ravens Reddit, see if anybody else has been linked to the Ravens thus far. Um, um, I haven't seen any other names. <laughs> Uh, Ravens read it. Love it. It's a, it's that meme of the guy looking at the girl in the red and his girlfriend staring at him. And the girl walking by, it says, Oklahoma. And then the Ravens is the dude looking at him, looking at her. And then Alabama like, ah, oh, what? Yeah, that's right, Alabama. We've changed schools. Go fuck yourself. So, <laughs> it's another one with... <laughs> with Lamar as the guy, and then the girl walking by is Hollywood and Boykin, and then the jealous girlfriend is Sneed, Lastly, Moore, and Scott. <laughs> yeah, man, I know we just signed uh, Moore, or no, not Moore. Who's that guy? Roberts. I don't know where he plays into this. I don't know where Lastly plays into this. Sneed, he was good. He better stay on the team. Scott, who knows? Let's see what he can do in preseason. But Lastly already had those drop issues. And Moore has just been like more of the same basic bitch. So 
We'll see. We'll, we'll see what things go down. But overall, goddamn, I am fucking excited for this year. I'm on the hype train. Let's go, Ravens. They've, yeah, like I said, they drafted all Hall of Famers, and now, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna crash off this high at some point. But as of right now, still super excited, super stoked. Can't wait to get this year going. Can't wait to see the rookies get all together. Can't wait to hear from them because I, I like to. I like to see their personalities. It really tells me a lot about them. You know, seeing their faces and the way they speak, it says it says a lot to me about whether they'll be successful or not. I mean, it never pans out. Like, oh, the way he talks, he's terrible. He's so nervous. Like, no, it's because he's nervous. He's standing in front of a bunch of people and he's getting paid a bunch of money and he doesn't doesn't want to fuck it up. So, anyways, yeah, super excited. There there were a bunch of picks that I was excited about. I'm going to see, I'm going to see if there's like a full list of other guys um, that we could possibly bring in as undrafted free agents. I don't think my guy, my wide receiver, Anthony Ratliff Williams had, was drafted, but he was one of my favorite wide receivers. And if we could bring him in, he's going to be a fucking starter. I'm just saying. So Ravens, if you want to hire me, you know, get me involved in the process. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be there for you. Ben and and I'm drafting Ravens. I'll be there for you when the drafting season ends. Um, oh, man, just sign me to a record label. Did you not hear those pipes? Damn. Whew. The future is now. That is right, Raven's website. Our future is now. So, all in all, super excited. If you, like me, are craving some Raven, you know, Subscribe to the podcast. It's on all the different apps, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play. Um, it's on YouTube, so if you're listening on YouTube, drop a like. Hit up the comment section. Tell me I'm amazing. I'm not going to lie. I So, you know, I've always kind of followed the draft. You know, I just more increasingly each and every year, it's just like an unhealthy obsession that I have with the Baltimore Ravens. And so really following the draft. And if you're listening to this, you do too. Because I'm no big syndicated network. I'm no well-known podcast. I literally started this this year. And so in February when I started, the draft process was already well underway. Got into things and really just wanted to make the right prediction. So I'm glad at least the Ravens drafted some guys that I talked about, some guys that I was hyped about if you want to go back and listen you'll hear me mention all of these guys names except for uh dalen mack even though i think i might have mentioned him honestly but i mentioned all these guys names i did mention a lot of names but i only mentioned names that i thought would be good for the ravens okay because this is a ravens podcast i don't care about other fucking teams and what they need i only talk about things or players that the ravens would want and who i think would be good on the ravens so Wow, man, I didn't pause this once. I'm, I'm freaking, whoo, I am hyped. It's like, whoo, I'm excited. I'm sweating. I'm sweating a little bit. I think that's because I turned off my AC unit because it's too loud. and It'll ruin the podcast. And it's Albuquerque. So it's like 80 degrees out right now. Eh, it was probably like 75 But, you know, I am in Albuquerque. I am from Maryland. My last name is Owings. And, yes, I am related to the Owings Mills people. So that's what's up. I wish I had some land. I would would totally buy a house in Owings Mills, even though it is kind of, you know, ghetto in some parts. The Owings Mills Mall apparently is, like, closed down now. You know, let me know if the Owings Mills Mall is still there. I want a piece of my family's action. But that would be cool. You know, buy a house in Owings Mills. Like, Owings, like, uh, like where you where we're at. Yes, and it's cool. The Ravens they practice in Owings Mills. It's there's just so many through lines here. It's it's crazy. Yeah, so grew up in Maryland. Now I'm out here. Why? Don't ask. <laughs> Even though it's just me talking. Don't ask. I can hear your voices. You're freaking me out. Oh God, schizophrenic. Oh God, schizophrenic for the Ravens. That's that's a new shirt idea. I ain't craving some Raven. I'm schizophrenic for the Ravens. So <laughs> I'm going to stop rambling. With that being said, love this draft. If you didn't, then fuck you. And if you did, let me know. Uh, you can send me an email at csrpod 
<clears throat> at gmail.com. Spelled C S R P O D at gmail.com. Send me an email. Get in touch with me. I'll uh, I'll answer a question on air if you want, or just hit me up. You want to say I'm doing a great job? Let me know that. If you want to be a hater, then go ahead and do that somewhere else. Damn it! Um, this is a purple Kool Aid podcast. Ooh, that would have been a great name. Instead of Craven some Raven, I could have just called it Purple Purple Kool Aid Podcast. Good a uh, alliteration, and then PCP. Oh, like a great classy mellow drug. You know, just a little bit of PCP is great for the baby. For ladies, if you're pregnant, just a little bit of PCP is going to get that baby at genius level. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'd, like I've said a thousand times, that's going to do it. I'm going to leave you with a go. Ravens!